Hello and welcome to this introduction to CASA and the measurement set. I'm Adam Averson from the University of Manchester and the UK Alma Regional Centre node. Okay, so first of all, what is CASA? CASA is the Common Astronomy Software Applications. It is a suite of uh, software tasks and tools that will do everything to take raw visibilities from an array telescope and interferometer and turn them into science-ready data. So images and spectra. CASA aims to support the current and next generation of radio interferometric telescopes, so ALMA, the JVLA, VLBI instruments, eMerlin, and in the future, things like the NGVLA. It has been developed by a consortium from the NRAO, ESO, NAOJ, CSIRO, and Astron. So, first of all, you need to have a copy of CASA, um, and these links will send you in the right direction. So, first we have the CASA homepage, casa.nrao.edu, following that the CASA download page, and finally a link to the CASA documentation, which is an invaluable resource for finding out all about CASA. Some final things to know in preparation for the uh, following sessions is that uh, the latest version of CASA is CASA 5.7. Um, I do note that there is a, a separate release train with uh, version 6, but uh, those won't be used in these sessions. And CASA is available to run on both Linux and Mac OS. Okay, once you've installed CASA, then you need to open up a terminal and you can start CASA by simply typing CASA into the terminal. That will open up the IPython interface as shown in the left figure here. And also the logger will pop up, which is the little uh, GUI interface, which I am showing in the bottom right of this slide. Um, the logger lists a lot of useful information, uh, which is the output of the tasks that are being run whilst you're working in CASA. So I've referred to them already, but the functions within CASA are referred to as tasks, and they each perform a specific function, um, and each task contains within it a set of user-definable parameters. So when you come to a task for the first time or the hundredth time and you want to know what the input parameters are uh, of a given task, you can use the imp command, I-N-P. So as an example, if we look at the task apply cal, which is the CASA task used to apply calibration tables to your data, and we want to know what the input parameters are, we type in our terminal, I-N-P, apply cal, and then hit enter, and the text shown here in the middle will appear, which lists all the parameters that you can use within ApplyCal. As you are working within CASA, if you just type INP with no task name, it will give you the inputs for the last task that you ran. So there are a lot of parameters within a task, and each of them, when you type INP, will have a little explanation of what that parameter is. If you want a bit more information on that, for the majority of parameters, if you type help, open brackets, par, P-A-R, dot, and then the parameter name, and then hit enter, then it will give you a lengthier explanation of that input parameter. So if that's not quite enough information, then CASA can take you straight to its own documentation webpage uh, for a given task. Um, within the command line, you can type uh, doc, open brackets, uh, TOC, in quotation marks, which will take you to the CASA documentation table of content, or for some specific tasks, if you type doc, open brackets, and then the task name, again in quotation marks, and then hit enter, then uh, you will give, be directed directly to that task uh, web page. I also give here a link to the full CASA task list for the version of CASA that you are using uh, within these sessions. Uh, so this is just a list of all the tasks, and you can scroll down and find the one you are interested in. Finally, as a, as a last resort, you could always use Google. It's not the easiest, um, and I recommend using a search which runs along the lines of CASA docs, and then NRAO, and then the task name. It should bring up the relevant page, but um, as I note here, Google seems to have cached the documentation from around 2010. Um, so occasionally, if you do do a Google search, the first result may well be a document that is over 10 years old and probably at that point inaccurate.
Okay, now that we are happy with how to find out what the inputs are for a given task, how do we go about working with that task? So, you should do the following each time you want to run a given task. First, type default, open brackets, and the task name. This will set all the task parameters to their default value. This means that if you have used the task previously and some of those values are already set, you're not going to accidentally use old parameter values in your next uh, execution of that task. Um, so with those defaulted, next you should then fill in all the parameters you need to use. Do an INP to check you filled in everything in the right format, which I'll discuss in the next slide. And then to execute the task, you simply type the task's name. Okay, so here is an example of using ApplyCal again. So in the first image at the top, I type default ApplyCal. This defaults all the parameters back to their uh, initial form. Next, I set the viz parameter to my viz, which is a measurement set. Next, I set the field to some made up source. And then finally, I set the SBW parameter. SBW is short for spectral window. And you'll see here, I have set it to zero um, as an integer value. So it's not in quote marks like the previous two. Those are the parameters I need to set for when running ApplyCal in this instance. I next type INP to check that everything is, is correct. And you will notice in the third image down that the spectral window value appears in red text. That is an indication from CASA that you have input a parameter value in the wrong format. So you see the other parameters in the color scheme that I, I was using when I made this screenshot are purple. It may be a different color for you, but CASA will stick to red for things that are wrong. Um, so CASA wants the spectral window to be set as a string, so it needs to be in quote marks. So on the fourth image down, I reset that parameter to a zero within quote marks. I type IMP again, and we see that nothing is in red, so everything is good to go. So finally, I type apply cal, hit enter, and apply cal will run. There is an alternate way you can use tasks, and that is rather than setting uh, each parameter individually type typing them out and hitting enter. If you write the task name, open brackets, and then each parameter uh, one after another uh, with a comma between them, and then finally a close brackets, you can run task as a single line command, which can be a bit quicker if you know exactly what you're doing. Okay, now we come to looking at CASA data. So CASA runs on visibilities and images. They are themselves directory structures. So the raw visibilities come in ASDM format for telescopes like ALMA and the VLA, which stands for Archival Science Data Model. They have to be imported into CASA uh, using a CASA task, uh, and that turns these raw visibility formats into measurement sets, or MS for short. I show in the image here, if you are outside of CASA and you do an LS, the Linux command for uh, listing what is within a directory, if you do an LS on a measurement set, so I'm looking here at a measurement set of the object TW Hydra. Uh, so LS measurement set name, and you'll see within that measurement set, there are a lot of subdirectories in blue here, and then data tables in uh, red, which are in binary data format. As viewed from a terminal, which is, is the image on the previous slide, an MS appears as a directory structure. Um, but to actually look at the data, we need to use the CASA task browse table. So we need to be we need to start CASA and then type the command browse table. Uh, that will bring up this uh, GUI interface as shown here. And you'll see now the measurement set looks like a data table. So we have rows and columns. So this example is the measurement sets main table. Um, each column contains information for of a specific type. So we have the UVW points in the first column, uh, the actual data, so that would be the complex uh, visibilities. We have flagging information, the antenna numbers, a time value, and some more flagging. There are more columns in this table than are shown here. You can scroll to the right of this table for quite some distance, and uh, there are several pages worth of this data um, tracking downwards. I know that um, the time axis, if 
such a thing exists for this is going downwards. So as you scroll down, you are moving forwards in time, such that each row of the table gives you information for whatever the given column heading is, which is unique to a given baseline. So a given antenna pairing and a unique time. In addition to the main table, which was just shown on the previous slide, there are many sub tables within MS and you can see uh, if you click on the table keywords button on the left hand side of the browse table GUI, then you can see those sub tables here. This is for an ALMA data set, so they may not necessarily be in all measurement sets, but there is additional information in there beyond what is given in the main table. Okay, finally, I just want to highlight some time-saving and handy things that CASA does to just make your life a little bit easier when you're typing in these commands and, and making your way through CASA. So when you have the CASA terminal running, if you press up, then it will show you all your previous commands. So if you type something slightly wrong, you could just press up and it will show you the last task you ran and you can change that parameter and then run it again. If you want to go back to a task you used earlier, um, then if you start typing that task name, so a few letters or a single letter and press up, then it will cycle through all the previous commands you have used that start with that letter or letters. CASA also tab completes. So if you start typing apply cal, if you do APP and press tab on your keyboard, then it should give you a list of options of inbuilt commands, which start with those letters and you can scroll down to apply cal and select that save you typing a little bit. Finally, if you run a task and it completes successfully and then you exit CASA and come back sometime later to the same directory, you can reinitialize the task that you used or tasks that you used by typing tget and then the task name. That restores the last set of parameters that you used, provided that the task completed successfully. Um, which is a really a really handy time-saving thing rather than having to repeat the process every single time. Uh, you'll notice as you're working with CASA that um, a lot of files which end in .last start appearing in your directory and these are the things that tget reads. Okay, that's it for the brief introduction to CASA and the measurement set. Thank you very much for listening and enjoy working with CASA.